James Mulholland walks his own meadow, land his people have farmed for generations. From Killeshandra and Butler's Bridge to Lispelaw and Enniskillen, the map of Ireland is a filigree pattern of blues and greens, as swirled and as intricate as any design in the Book of Kells. Blue for lake, green for deep meadow, a dreaming, sighing land. Until northeast of Lisnesky, the colour changes to brown, the Fermanagh countryside rises into rough moorland, this is Esh Brally Mountain. There were ten children in the Mulholland family, four of them went out into the big world, an exact way to describe leaving a place so blessedly secluded and so self-contained. Six stayed in the home place, four brothers, Daniel, the youngest, Frank, James and John, two sisters, Mary and Margaret, strong, quiet people whose hearts are bound closely to the homestead, the land around it and the fruits of that land which are not, as you will see, confined absolutely to the conventional farm produce. Self-containment, self-sufficiency are two of the chief marks of the Mulholland farm, their own poultry and cattle, butter, eggs, turf. Sister Mary steps out to fill the food trough for the free roaming hens whose eggs always seem to have a better flavour than those of the regimented modern birds. No glittering newfangled machinery here, nor is the absence felt as any deprivation. Fine flocks of geese and a pet of a gander feeding out of a pot are rare sights nowadays anywhere in rural Ireland. And after the milking, the cows go lazily back to pasture. Frank Mulholland standing there. Dan following the cattle along a lane secretly curtained and perfumed with bushes and brambles. A place for children to play at outlaws and pirates, the haunted country lane of everyone's childhood. And good currant bread and home churned butter with beads of crystal bubbles glimmering on it were all part of that rural childhood if you were country reared or lucky enough to have relations in rural places. Butter may still be the cream, as we are told so often, but butter made in the old way in the home dairy or the spotless farm kitchen was the creme de la creme. The churn that Mary Mulholland uses is in the family for a century. Think of all those churnings and rinsings and scaldings and coolings to guarantee the purity and the flavour of the butter. She handles the dash and the joggle with an ease and skill that is instinctive, at least inherited. This is how she saw her mother do it, how her mother saw her mother do it. And every expert woman of the churn, like every good ballad singer, develops special personal skills, little touches, variations, grace notes. Carefully, she scalds the colander. Collects the floating butter. Drains off the buttermilk. Washes the butter with clear spring water. Moulds the fragments into unity with the joggle. Uses a scallop shell in the salting. The sea the shell came from 
is only a step west over there, beyond the reaches of the urn. Mary shapes the pats of butter by hand on a breadboard. No fancy ornamented paddles here, but the clean shape of the pure butter, in the style of those great rugby footballs of butter, that even in English-speaking districts were known as miscons. <laughs> 